on the mic with Mike. On the mic with Mike. Okay. On the mic with Mike. I'm on the mic with Mike. He's like a guru. No, he's a businessman with a great radio show. And he supports the non-profits. Watch his show and grow. Hi, this is Sylvia Farnstein, and I am on the air with Mike King. He is widening the lens of humanity, and I'm so happy to be a part of his journey. Hi, hi, I'm Roby Martin with CBS 6 Eat It Virginia, and I was just on the mic with Mike, me, Mike, Marcy, talking about all things Richmond. Tune in, man, tune in! Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. Mike King here. This is part of the Mike King Biz Radio Network. That is ESPN Richmond 106.1 International Business Growth Radio, as well as the Hounds of Business community. That is uh, business people on a worldwide scale talking about how business can help society be better. That's what we do. You can follow me on social platforms, which is On the Mic with Mike RVA, as well as Mike King Biz. You know what we do around here? We talk to the best and the brightest, and we leave the light on. We're like Motel 6. You know, we leave the light on for you and friends come home. We don't even dress up for you, you know. We don't even put out the good stuff. You don't even, we don't even lock the door. You just show, just show up. Hey, the friends from the Salvation Army are back. Welcome back to the program. Glad to be back. Thank you, Mike. All right, so tell us who you are and what you do. I'll start first. I'm Charlene Neiman. I'm the Director of Development with the Salvation Army here in Richmond, the Central Virginia Area Command, and uh, glad to be here. All righty. And there's a distinguished gentleman to your right. Sure is. Sir, yeah. tell us who you are and what you do. Hello, everyone. I'm Samuel Major Kim, uh, Area Commander of the uh, Salvation Army Central Virginia. So I'm just uh, working with all the part uh, city partners for the most uh, good. So All righty, sir. Uh, now, uh, one of the great parts about having your own radio show is I get to ask the hard questions. <laughs> How long have you been in this? And when I look at the Salvation Army, it reminds me about being in the Army. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, it looks like that, it feels like that, there are the ranks that go with it. How long have, are you in the Salvation Army? You are. Yes, sir. Okay, how <laughs> long have you, is that, that, so that's the correct way of saying it. You're in the Salvation Army. Yes, sir. Okay. So how long have you been in? Well, as an officer, I am now 16 years serving in the Salvation Army. Okay, so you're an officer, clearly you're, you're a major. What were you prior to being an officer? Well, um, uh, well, uh, I was the um, uh, youth director uh, before the officer uh, ship uh, in the Salvation Army for four years. And then I just ordained and uh, commissioned as a Salvation Army officer. Okay, we always talk about people's passion, people, the things that drive people. What was it about service that took you to the Salvation Army? For personal mm -hmm. reason, well, uh, actually, I was an old day in the pastor in the Baptist from Korea. All right, so, so shout out to my, all my <laughs> okay. whole family are preachers. Yes, right. My sister's a yes, preacher. Right. The army got me. All my cousins are preachers, so... Okay, I'm, I'm in good hands. Yes, right. So I was honestly ordained uh, pastor in Baptist uh, in Korea, and my wife was social service worker. And we were really thinking about the ministry to preach the gospel and help the needy without the discrimination before meeting the Salvation Army. But since we came to America about 22 years ago, uh, well, we really found that Salvation Army is doing the most good, preach the gospel and help the needy without any discrimination. Oh, that is what I need to you looked for. So then I just turned to the Salvation Army. You found your home at the Salvation Army. Okay, so we're going to get, we're going to get, yeah. you, this is a therapy <laughs> session right here. Sorry okay. about this. Yeah. Okay, so how do we find, I always talk to leaders, how do we find, or, or people who are, or service and purpose driven, how do we find the next generation of you and your wife with, with young people? Well, uh, we, uh, well, that is one of our uh, goal or uh, thinking all the time to look for uh, the next generation uh, leadership in the Salvation Army. So, well, first of all, uh, we Salvation Army, well, I need to explain a little bit more, but I'm saying yes, Salvation Army no, please tell is us. also a church. So, uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that is exactly the same as the evangel any other evangelical churches, and we have the same root of a Methodist and 
Wesleyan churches. Anyway, so Salvation Army is a church, and I would say that I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, uh, rather than uh, officer, well, in personal reference. Anyway, so we, the Salvation Army Church, uh, is really looking for the next generation of the leadership in the Salvation Army through the church program. Uh, that is mainly what is going on. So uh, we have uh, lots of youngsters and young adults, and we try to counseling uh, to those people to be the future leadership in the Salvation Army, and we try to guide and counsel and pray for them. One of the great parts about this is we knew somewhat about the Salvation Army, didn't know that it was actually a church. Yes, right. And Many we people. just see the good work that happens. Uh, okay, so we're here talking about the Salvation Army. Let's get the not the not the <laughs> not the preacher's side, yeah, but, okay. you know, the side of let's talk about the programs that you guys have because you guys got great programs. Like I said, the one thing we always know about is the cattle program. We see you guys at the holidays. Sure. And when you were here before we talked, we did talk about some of the other programs as well as the homeless shelter. So talk a little bit about the other programs that you have and one of the reasons why we're here today. Certainly. Uh, thank you. So you're, uh, you're right. There is the, the church, which actually is called a core. And so they have the oh. core. And, and it, it makes sense. A, a major is like a right reverend or a father. And so uh, the clergy, as they have the years... They start as lieutenant and then after certain years. So they have the church part because the church, so many programs throughout, you know, hundreds and thousands of years without the church doing social services and helping the needy, you know, so many things wouldn't get done. And so just like any other like Catholic charities, um, you know, we have a social services arm. And so that's kind of more where I am. So I'm the director of development. So I'm fundraising and uh, promoting our programs and services that we do. Mm -hmm. And we have been in Richmond, the Salvation Army. Next year, it'll be 140 years that we've been here. And through that time, we've done uh, many different kinds of programs and services. Uh, one of our first things was that we had a hospital for unwed mothers in the city of Richmond. Um, and so we have evolved and served the community as time has gone by and as the needs have changed. Currently, what we're really known for is our angel tree, our Christmas assistance program, and that's kind of tied in a little bit with the kettles, but I can, I'll get to that in a second. But really, we are serving the community 365 days a year. There's not a day, an hour goes by that we aren't working because we have a shelter that we run year round. So we have a, men, a single men's shelter, and then we have a shelter for single parent families that we are currently running. We have a Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club that's part of the Boys and Girls Club uh, you know, network throughout, throughout the country, but ours is a little bit different because it's faith-based. So we have a Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club over in the Churchill section. Shout out to Mr. Jones out there. Exactly, yes. that's who I was. Yep, yes. yep, yep, he's been there so 30, forever. 30, 30 years. years. <laughs> well, this is his 30 He's year. one of the first people that I've met and when you when you think about the Salvation Army Boys and Girls Club it he would be like the poster of what that means a leader who is totally committed mm -hmm. and people show up and I remember when I first got here in 2014 you know you see the evolution of that and Mr. Jones is right there making it happen so yeah you guys have a lot of the selfish leaders who make things because these programs don't run by themselves that's yeah, right. Exactly. And uh, so we've got a wonderful, obviously the officers are wonderful the, over at the church. The church members are wonderful. We've got employees that, you know, are just dedicated and put in lots of hours, put in, you know, they're passionate about their work. And then volunteers to help make those programs and services. Because in addition to what I just talked about, we're also helping people pay their rent, their utilities uh, when they get by. Because we want to stop. Uh, you know, so many people are on that cusp of becoming ho of becoming homeless, and so we want to try and keep people in their houses and with their electric turned on, and so that we provide those services too. And then in our angel tree. And then what you were talking about with the kettle, that's one of our biggest fundraising um, because all that money that goes into those kettles 
And this year we were. It's not coming in my pocket. Yeah, no, it's not coming in. Yeah, yeah, no, the, we are really proud at the Salvation Army that 82 cents of every dollar goes directly into programs and services. Um, so when you do put uh, some money in those red kettles or send us a check in the mail or go onto our website to donate, know that it stays in the community. 82 cents on every dollar. And this year it was kind of cool. We were talking about this. We, in a couple of locations with the kettles, because people are carrying less cash. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we don't have to hide. Yeah, we, we uh, I think we had five of them out this year that you could uh, tap your credit card on there kind of thing. So that may be the, that may be the, you know, the wave of the future that way. So people are not in the car looking when we pull up and we see. <laughs> The salvation out there, and we go into that panic mode. Yeah. Like, oh no! So let me go in the store first, and then I get some cash on the way out. Exactly. That's you know, exactly. It's, it's us and the Girl Scouts, right? You that know, is true. You got you to split the front of the store between those two groups. So you're here. The Salvation Army is here. But it's not only do you do that, you're in the middle of a. Is it a capital campaign to? You guys are raising money to to do what? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so right now we have uh, 50 beds, uh, you know, men and family shelter at our headquarters building, but it is too small and too old building. So that's why we try to move to the Center of Hope on Chamberlain Avenue. Okay. So now uh, for the all the uh, reconstruction at the Chamberlain Avenue building, we are under uh, capital campaign, which is a fifteen and a half million dollar in total. But um, one of the great uh, news and great support from the city of Richmond is uh, they committed to support the seven million dollars uh, when we raise the remaining amount in three years. The city of Richmond. Yes, right. And I think some of the counties are chipping into that as, yes, as right. well. So that's when we talk about public-private partnerships, mm -hmm. business and community helping those in need. Okay, so, and that is a three-year campaign. Yes, right. Yes. Okay. But now we're here. Uh, one second, ladies and gentlemen. We So this is on the mic with Mike, Mike King here. We got the Salvation Army. Uh, a big supporter of, of the program. Hi, I'm Reba Hollingsworth with CBS 6, and I was on the mic with Mike and had a fabulous time. Make sure you tune in every week. Okay, so we got some breaking news with you guys. Something big is happening. Hold on one second. We, we pulled out the, the sound effects. <laughs> uh, ladies, you know we don't spare any expenses. Well, we do. I mean, it came from the five and below store <laughs> with my granddaughter. Okay, what break, What breaking news do we have? The reason, that, one of the reasons you're here today. Well, we are here to announce and to invite everyone out there to come and join us at the Leaders Doing the Most Good Awards Luncheon, which is being held on Wednesday, April the 24th. And we are honoring some of those partners who help us get uh, our work done and are also committed to doing the most good. So we've got uh, Reggie Gordon is our um, Red Shield winner for individual excellence. Feedmore is our, and these are all uh, people that have partnered and helped us and do greater work uh, throughout the whole community. Okay. So it's Reggie uh, Gordon, Feedmore, uh, as a nonprofit, they really help us with getting food for our shelters, for our Boys and Girls Club, holiday meals, they're out there doing a lot, and then Puritan Cleaners. They've been beside us doing coats for kids for decades, and so making sure not only kids, but their whole family is kept warm during the winter, and they do so many other things, from cleaning American flags to helping girls and, and boys get their prom dresses, and they're just so, great. You know how I feel about sponsors. Uh, shout out to all the sponsors out there, uh, because I always say this microphone ain't free, and change of the world ain't cheap, easy, or free. Show them some love for Feed More Puritan and Mr. Reggie Gordon. They make a commitment to the community. I mean, you see Puritan all do, I mean, the stuff that they do, it's so much, and you, you talk and you want to talk to an organization like that that says, what is it about helping that is all in the DNA of what you guys do? The same with Feed More. People that know Feed More, they hear the name and really don't understand the impact. Or uh, Reggie Gordon, you know, somebody who's committed to the cause, and here they are, we're celebrating them, because what they're doing is celebrating the community. Can't, you can't beat that. Okay, so the date is April 24th. 24th. So Wednesday. Yep. You know, Tickets are available? Tickets are available. And you know what I think we're going to do? If anybody puts in Mike King in the promo code, uh -oh. we'll, 
We'll give him a couple of dollars off of You know what? And, that's a, and we're going to go see yeah. our friend <laughs> who's offered a keynote speaker. Yes. Shout out to Kelly Till out there, the Richmond Times Dispatch, good friend of the program, and a sponsor of the program. So we just like to thank you for showing a lot of love yeah. uh, to Kelly Till. She, I mean, the one thing, when you look at the Times Dispatch, the amount of things that they support yeah. are, are, you know, mm -hmm. are, are doing some big things. Okay, so uh, Major Kim, uh, this is, we like, so it's a church shout out. And uh, <laughs> a couple of months ago, I was at, uh, I was down on Belt Boulevard, and uh, I was at a, a shelter there, and the man who ran the shelter said, hey, the Mormons came by, and they donated money, and they donated supplies mm -hmm. to us, and it really helped. I'm like, okay, that's great. Okay, cool. So I go away. About two weeks later, I'm in the studio, and the friends of the Chesterfield Library come. And the man, and they're talking about that. And so the man who runs the library system says, oh, at my church. I'm like, excuse me, sir, you can't do that here. He's like thinking, and I'm going to say, we can't talk about church here. I said, uh, no. Uh, if you have to tell us who your church is, you got to do us a church shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's looking at me. Clearly, he doesn't know what a church shout out is. So I'm like, okay, a church shout out, you got to tell us what your church is. Hey, this is, I go to so-and-so Ebenezer Baptist Church, and blah, blah, blah. And he's looking at me, and he still doesn't get it. I'm like, what church do you go to? So he goes, I go to the Church of Latter-day Saints. I'm a Mormon. I'm like, okay, now i got to explain a church shout out to a Mormon. <laughs> this is going to be, okay, i gotta, I got to walk you through this. But I told him, there's a reason that you're here today. Two weeks ago, right. somebody told me what your church did. Two weeks later, you're standing in my studio. Not about this, but just by chance, you're here. You were here today because I didn't know the Salvation Army was a church. I just know the good work that you mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And realizing, okay, so this is how this is how it goes about. This is the structure. It's something, and that's one of the reasons that we do with this program, is we talk about things that people don't know. People know that the good that you do. And then, go ahead. Yeah, well, as I already mentioned, yeah, it definitely Salvation Army is a Christian-based organization. As our mission statement says, yeah, we try to uh, teach the uh, Bible and preach the gospel and help the needy without discrimination in the name of Jesus Christ. However, well, uh, for all the program and services is really toward everybody, everybody. in without discrimination. That is one of the most important thing. That means anyone can be our partner for the most good to serve the people without the discrimination. So no matter who they are, if they want to just be a partner to serve the needy, yes, we grab the hands together and help work together. So that is what the Salvation Army is doing there. So we've come through COVID. How are the people doing these days out there? Uh, one, we'll start with you, and then we'll start talking basically on, on on the face side. How are people doing? Like you said, there's programs that you have to keep people in their homes, to keep the electric going. Uh, we we came through COVID, everybody said, "Whoo, boy, we made it!" And now we're on the other side, going, "Oh wow. boy." Right, because there was a lot of programs and assistance to help people, you know, stay housed and to stay mm -hmm. saved, uh, uh, safe, and uh, you know, provide more assistance during COVID and then you know that started going away so evictions have crept back up and so um, you know there was a, a, a moratorium on evictions for quite some time and then they took that off and boy exactly you know um, so we we're seeing you know those start skyrocketing again prices have gone up for, <laughs> for everything everything yeah. so people were already stretched thin before and now it's just gotten worse kind of thing. So we're seeing an increased need both for housing and just general support. Okay. Um, yeah. How are people doing spiritually out in the streets now? What are you seeing, Major? Well, um, well, uh, well, as an officer's eyes, I mean, uh, in the uh, officer's eyes, well, mm -hmm. I still see many people are really struggling uh, without the uh, light of a God, and uh, well, that is my heart that I just want to approach them, and I want to just uh, just uh, hug them and just uh, try to talk and counsel and pray for them if they want. So, well, of course, yeah, many people are struggling even spiritually. That is what I see all the time, everywhere. Well, since the COVID happening, 
Well, that is the more. That is what I see, what I experience. So that is what the I army, mean, part of the Salvation Army ministries. That's what it is. Okay, what the, the Salvation Army is out there helping people every day. Right. What's the Salvation Army need? I mean, really, we need financial contributions first and foremost. Um, you know, people. People are always so generous, and you know, a lot of times they're like, "Well, you know, can we give blankets or pillows?" And we need those things too. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, we'll we'll never turn those away. But because we are a nonprofit status, and we can have bulk buying power, kind of thing. So really, when people donate to us, we can really stretch that dollar even further because we get discounts, we get special incentives, kind of thing. So we can go out and buy those things. So it's financial contributions. Uh, first and foremost, and they can always do that on our website, which is uh, SalvationArmyCentralVA.org, O-R-G, or they can just give us a call. But um, so financial, but then we always do need things like, um, you know, volunteers to help serve meals, to help with our um, programs at our Boys and Girls Club. If they have like a special expertise, we're looking for people that maybe are dancers um, that would like to kind of come into our Boys and Girls Club and maybe teach a dance program or gardeners, things like that. So we can be very specialized volunteers, and then it can be more like helping us paint or weed or around Christmas time, that's really when we get our biggest group of volunteers. Um, and really start thinking with your companies now of like, can you, can you as a company sign up and ring bells for us? Because that's a great way to get out, meet people in the community. You can be wearing your kind of logoed shirt kind of thing while you're out there and, and making some visibility, but also helping us raise funds that stay directly in the community. Let me just add one more thing very briefly. Uh, well, we didn't say uh, specifically, but um, at the Chamberlain Avenue building, we are still uh, currently running the 150 uh, shelter beds and uh, it's going to be turned to uh, 50 uh, single men uh, year round uh, shelter from May 1st. Uh, the reason why I'm saying is, yes, if we run the uh, program with the city of Richmond, but we still uh, look for any partners who can just uh, work together for the uh, homeless uh, service in the city here. So that is what I am trying to add. Okay. So starting the last December 1st, we started operating the cold weather shelter, the inclement weather shelter for okay. the city. And so, you know, uh, we do that in conjunction with the city. It's open to anybody in greater Richmond, you know, um, and, but it is going to close on April 15th. A week later, it's going to be closed. Then we turn right. to a uh, year-round mm -hmm. shelter from May 1st. And then uh, summer during weather. summer season, if it is hot weather or if there is any disaster or tornado, we will open yeah. the shelter during summer season temporarily. Then November 15, we will reopen the cold weather shelter for five months. So that is what's going on with the city of Richmond. And we are really uh, working with the last of our partners for the uh, shelter program. So. The work never stops. Uh, yes, right. <laughs> because there's always people in need. Yes, right. There are always people in need, and so uh, as they say in church, I'd be remiss by you know by not saying once again, help the Salvation Army. They're out there helping uh, our friends and neighbors and family. Uh, all April fifteenth. The 24th. April 24th, like I was saying. Uh, you got to pay your taxes by that, April Yeah, that's, right. that's what I'm worried there you about. Go. Get yeah. the refund and then come and support and come the, So <laughs> April 24th at the Jefferson, 1130 to 12 is networking, 12 o'clock. Good friend Kelly Till is the keynote. Colonial Web, Wegmans, Kroger, Summit Marketing are all folks who are out there supporting it, as well as Feed More, Puritan Cleaners, and Mr. Reggie Gordon. Yes. So one last time, how can people find information out about uh, the Salvation Army. Easiest way is to um, is our website, which is SalvationArmyCentralVA.org, or we're also on Facebook and Instagram, and our handle is at Sal S A L Army R V A, and also LinkedIn as well. So follow us on any of our social mm -hmm. media, or visit us on our website. We've got everything there for you. This okay. One. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. And so, yeah, once again, I'd like to shout out uh, the good folks over at the Salvation Army, Mr. Jones, as well as Miss Dot, Miss Dot Crenshaw. She was one of the first people that I met. Mm -hmm. Mama Dot is out there always doing some great things.
been always been really supportive and great to me. So these folks got to go. You know, they, they they look good, but they got work to do. <laughs> so we got to go. All right, folks, take care now. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much.